Hello, welcome to Orphan Espresso. I'm Doug. I'm Bart. And this is our Pico flow control travel pitcher for filter coffee. The, the Pico is, has a 100% silicone body, silicone lid, and stainless steel flow control gate. Now, the premise of this, uh, this pouring pitcher, pouring vessel, whichever you'd like to call it, is that it is crushable, it's packable, it's lightweight, and it's easy to use. Easy to learn how to use, easy to adapt to almost any type of pour over coffee method that you use. Now, they come, as you see, in red, yellow, blue, and gray. This is our current color lineup. Now, the secret behind this, or the, 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 the the challenge with this was designing the Pico, or the beak, okay? The beak, in combined with the flow control gate, is the functional equivalent of the gooseneck pitcher, okay? Swan neck, sometimes called gooseneck, sometimes called Japanese pouring pitcher, pouring kettle, sometimes called. As you see, different styles, different shapes, different colors, different manufacturing, um, and even if you're lucky enough to go into a thrift store and find an old coffee set, you can find some pretty good pouring pitchers. They weren't designed this specific way. Now this is a Japanese uh, design that goes with a filter coffee method that was developed in Japan. And sometimes it's called pour over coffee, sometimes it's called single serve coffee, Sometimes it's dripper. Dripper coffee, pour over coffee, but the, the basis of it is, is that you use a, a cone-shaped dripper that has a big hole in the center. Different fin designs, and you use a, a pointed filter paper. Sometimes you, you can use metal screen filters that are pointed in the bottom. Okay, but that, this is the basic premise of it. And there are other others that don't have the big hole, but this is a slightly different method. It uses a different filter. But, as you can see, they all have basically the same design centered around this pouring neck. And they use different size tubes as well, depending on the fineness of manufacture. I think the smallest is a Takahiro that I think it is a four millimeter tube. Maybe three, I'm not sure. It's quite small, and it's, it's for doing very specific style of Japanese pour over coffee, as you can see. Okay. And due to the size of these tubes and the, the, the method, often it requires a, a, a quite a bit of practice. And, and you'll, you'll quite uh, you see a video or you see a barista in a coffee shop and they do this kind of specific kind of pulsy, spirally oh. movement. And um, it's a little hard to control and it's a little hard to learn. And depending on the size of the kettle, it can also Get be a bit heavy. Yeah. So, we decided to make this, this has a capacity of about 450 grams of water, milliliters of water. Uh, it's for making a two cup size. You can make a four cup size, but you might have to refill it. The two cup is the smaller filter, and the smaller dripper. Now, let me give a little uh, how-to, a little instruction manual, and specifically how to use this. It's such a simple device that you wouldn't think that there were any details to cover, but we'll just do that. Now, you see, in the beak, there's two rails. There's a rail on each side, okay? So when you want to insert the, the, the stainless steel, you want to insert the gate, you squeeze it together slightly. And I want, to, I want to demonstrate this, but I also want to be able to see it, okay? Squeeze it together and push it down. Oh, I'm sorry, Barb. You push it all the way down. You make sure it's seated in the bottom. There's a little ridge in the bottom. Once it's in there, it's in there, okay? You won't be squeezing it while you use it, but you know, I'm just saying that you want to change that. I'll see if I can do a little better job. Squeeze this together slightly so it's easy to find the rails. And once you find the rails, down it goes, and you push it all the way into the bottom so there's no leaks at the bottom. Right? I've got my five in there. The lid goes on this way. Behind the dam and then... From the back. Down. The lid just slides in from the back and you push down the heel. It comes out the same way. Okay. 
That's really all there is to it. There's also a hole in the middle of the lid so that if you like to use a digital yeah. or uh, analog thermometer, you can put it through. Yeah, you put the probe down through there if you want to see what your water temperature is. Now this is designed, you can't heat uh, water in a microwave with this. Just be sure you don't put the metal dam in. Right, the take the metal dam out, it can be done. Uh, but generally you take your larger boiling, your larger vessel, and you pour into here, okay? So that's the gist of this. Now I'll basically demonstrate. I'm just using some cold water here. Blasts from the past, those are the beakers from the one drip stand we used to make. Right, that, yeah, the one drip, that was nice. So, I think, I think, it, says, there, I think yeah. it says one drip right there. Yeah, yeah, that was fancy. Okay, I've put in the num put in the four, the, the three, the smallest one. This is personally the one I like because um, you just have extreme control. Now, you want to keep the, the, the water. I'm holding it at about a 45-degree angle, and you want to keep the water up onto the dam in the back. Okay? Now, that keeps your flow steady. Right. And you don't do all of this, you know, you know, artistic swooping around. You you hold it steady, hold the water on the dam, and you get your spiral. You want to hold it in the center, and now one aspect that I should add is that when I when we travel, I never I, I don't take a scale, and um, a lot of times when people do pour over coffee, they'll they'll put it do it on a scale. So without using a scale, you kind of have to. Uh, depending on the, the pour that you use, uh, I just use a single pour. I use a straight through, through pour on this. We'll demonstrate it on a future video. We're going to do some brews with our travel uh, brewer. But, you know, I do a straight through, through pour, 300 grams of water. And when my water is, is done in the pitcher, I'm pretty much done on my pour. If you do pulse pours, uh, you can time it. We have lots of information on different types of pouring methods inside of that box. You'll need a magnifying glass to read it. But now, if I want to change, and if you're using hot water, that dam will get hot. Squeeze it together, push it down. I'll go ahead and I'll put this on. Okay. My five is is a lot more aggressive stream. It it really does make a difference. But once again. You have very good control, which is why I like, you know, we of course use this when we travel, but I also like to use it at home because I ha it has such good control. Okay, that's basically about all there is to the, to the Pico travel pitcher. Um, I've used one for, the same one for almost four years. Um, it took us two years to, to get this project done. Mm -hmm. Very hard on the beak. Yeah, the, the, the beak was a real challenge and to get actually done. Actually, it's patented. Yeah, true. This entire, I think it has a number somewhere. Yeah. Um, but uh, just for a little, a little hint, if you always make your coffee the same way, um, I took, once again, four years ago, I put this on a scale, I measured out 300 grams of water, 300 milliliters of water, because I always use 18 grams of coffee, 300 milliliters of water. That's the standard that I use, okay, when making two cups of coffee. I put the water in there, and I took a Sharpie, and I put, boop, a little line. I took a marker, and I put a small line at 300. That line has been on there for four years now. And if, if you use two different methods, you can put a mark on one side, you can put a mark on the other side. Uh, so I'm, you know, completely mobile and, and I don't, don't need a scale. So that's a big plus in the, in that department. And that means I don't have to pack a scale. Doesn't have to pack a scale. So that's it. That's the Pico. I hope this has been informative and, um, I hope you stick around for our, our future videos on our travel series and other subjects. Thank you.